ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته everyone and today you join me um to discuss a very 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 important topic um one that has been neglected i would say or not given importance um as much as it should be and that is the power of dua and you know once the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was walking past a group of people and they were suffering from some affliction um and he said why don't they make dua to allah for protection and it's such a simple saying you know and you know with what's going on in the world today uh, and the pandemic and so on that muslims in all across the world they're facing so many problems you know there's the coronavirus on one hand there's hunger there's war um, so many different problems and the question can be directed to us exactly what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said why don't they make dua to allah for protection and it's not that we muslims have forgotten dua completely we all make dua but our idea on and our practice on how we make dua and it's become so distorted you know and it's got to the point where we only make dua when things we've become absolutely hopeless in a situation we have nowhere left to turn to and then we raise our hands and we say ya allah help ya allah help now the tragedy the tragedy is that dua it is known as the weapon of a believer and you know qadr the destiny what allah has destined nothing can change it no matter how rich you are no matter how much wealth you have no matter how much influence you have what allah has written will come to pass and there is nothing you can do to change it except dua that is the only thing that can change it and it is the essence of worship and dua itself it means worship and with it we can never ever fail but without it we can never ever ever succeed and you know dua it should be the first and the last resort for a believer with all the plans and actions coming in between so to give you an example if you take a sandwich yeah everything you have in the sandwich lies between the two pieces of bread you know now if the bread was missing you would just have the you wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't be a sandwich you know it would be ineffective likewise if you have none of the things inside and you just have the two pieces of bread that also is useless like that the dua should be the two pieces of bread that the top and the bottom the beginning and the end should be dua and the means that we take should be what is in between and likewise if you just make dua without taking action it's like eating a sandwich with just the bread you know um and you know dua it's a conversation with allah you know every single time you make dua know that you are now speaking to allah our creator the lord the master the all knowing the all powerful the king of all kings and you know if dua is done properly it is the path for every success and you will feel it when you make dua properly when you make it with conviction you know we will feel the effects of the dua and dua is not something we should ever take lightly because in every single difficulty our first action our first resort number 1 should be to go into dua and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his to seek aid and to make our effect successful for example let's say that you uh, a person fall, falls ill you know nowadays the first thing what, what do we do go to the doctor we try get the doctor and if it's something serious we don't look for just any doctor we look for the best doctor but as muslims that shouldn't be our first resort our as muslims we should raise our hands to allah and ask allah for the cure and we ask allah oh allah 
take us to the best doctor that is qualified to treat this condition. Do you see what I mean? That we don't just sit there and wait for, you know, the, the cure to be just hoping that you'll be cured. No, we ask Allah. Oh Allah, every little thing. Oh Allah, give us the best doctor. Oh Allah, give us cure through this doctor. Because wallahi, my brothers, wallahi, my sisters, that no matter how good the doctor is, you can go to the world's best hospital. But if Allah doesn't will for you to be cured, then there is not a medicine or a doctor on this planet that can save you. And which is why we should ask Allah. Because it makes sense. Because when we look, everything is created by Allah, right? Everything is owned by Allah. And Allah has the power to make things happen. And he has make the power to, not, to make not, uh, things not happen. So it would make sense that the first person that we should ask is Allah, right? And when we look at the examples of history, in the examples of history, when we look at the Battle of Badr, you know, we just done a little presentation a, a few days ago where we studied about the Battle of Badr and how great was Allah's victory and how, how Allah's help came. You know, that 300 believers be a thousand and they were outnumbered but how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels from the heavens to help the Muslims but what happened the night before Badr when everyone was asleep the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was up all night doing what he was making dua to Allah oh Allah give this small group of Muslims victory against the enemies now Another example, we all know uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi, the one you know, who fought against the Crusaders. And he was known as one of the most fierce fighters. And Allah blessed the Ummah a lot of victories through him. What was his nights? How were his nights? His nights were spent making dua, crying and seeking Allah's help. And you see that in the history of Islam, with every single success, with every single victory, with every person that has had such a massive impact on our ummah, you will find that in the night or during secret, that the power, that the weapon that they had was dua. And as Muslims, for every single thing, small or big, our resort our thing that we should go to is dua. It's, when we make dua, it's, we shouldn't think that this is too small. I don't need to make dua. It's something minor. Or this is too big. I don't need to make dua. No. There is no label as big or small when it comes to dua. To the point where the prophet, you know, the uh, companions, they used to ask dua for their shoelaces. Something as small as a shoelace that they would make dua for. You know, because nothing is too small for Allah. And nothing is too big for Allah. And that is something we have to drill in our minds again and again and again. Is that, you know, a lot of the times as Muslims, when we ask, you know, we don't ask for big things. Why? We, we don't, in our minds, we don't perceive it. You know, we think, oh, but, you know, if I have this job. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford a Lamborghini. You know, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford a mansion. No, this is not the mentality you have when you make dua. Allah is the one who is capable of giving you all things. So when you make dua, you always aim big. You always ask for the best. But don't let things like, oh, I can't afford it. I had, I'm not in this country. I'm not. No. When you make dua, you make dua with your heart and you ask for the best. And you know, there is nothing more dear to Allah than a servant making dua to him. And you know, that being said, it's very important that when we make dua, we make dua with our hearts. A lot of the times we, you know, we pull up a, our phones, we have a list of Arabic duas, no clue what they mean. And we just read it, you know, after you say, What does the dua mean? You don't know. You don't, it doesn't make sense. That imagine you're asking someone for something, but you don't know what you're asking. Is it going to come from the heart? No. But say, for example, that, you know, when you've been, when you're in distress, you know, when you're sad, when you're, when you really feel like you need help, you know, that dua that you make that, Ya Allah, 
I'm, I'm, I'm really in trouble. Ya Allah, please help me. And you feel that dua with your heart, that is how every single dua should be for a believer. So when you make dua, if you're making dua in Arabic, learn what the dua means in English before you, understand, before you ask. You know, we ask forgiveness, ask how are you asking for forgiveness? We say, Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbi saghira. Do we know what that means? We say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Do we know what that means? We need to know because when you know what you're asking for, you have conviction. And that's when you ask with complete sincerity. And another very important thing that the power of dua is that we should make plentiful dua in times of ease and comfort. And this is something very, very important. That, you know, majority of the time as Muslims, we only raise our hands to Allah when, when we've tried every other option, all of it's failed. Then we go, Ya Allah, help me. No. When you remember Allah in times of ease, he will remember you in times of difficulties. And we should always make sure that we have this notion that we don't ask Allah just when things get hard. And, you know, some people don't ask Allah at all. And it's a very important thing that Prophet ﷺ said, the person who does not ask from Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. Subhanallah. That if you don't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with you. Why? Because, you know, when you don't ask Allah, it's as if you're saying, Ya Allah, I don't need you. I can do these things by myself. I don't need to ask from you. But when you ask Allah for the smallest of things, Allah looks at you and says, Subhanallah. Allah says that, look, this servant, even for the smallest of things, he's asking me. And what does that show? That you're a slave and that he's the king and that you depend on him for everything. And when this relationship between you and Allah comes that for every single need, you raise your hand, every single want, every single thing, you raise your hand and you ask Allah, you ask Allah, you will develop this beautiful relationship with Allah and you will feel yourself much closer to Allah. Because why? Because you're so reliant on Allah. You're so in need of Allah. Whereas when you don't, you rarely remember Allah. Why? Because you rarely ask him. And it's very, very important as Muslims, we should ask and ask and ask. And, you know, when we think of asking, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, how do we ask Allah? Some people say, do I use professional English? Uh, do, you know, can I say it in a different language? How you ask Allah is like this. Now, let's picture, pretend you're a father or you're a mother, or if you are a mother or your father. And say you have three children, okay? You have one who's a small, he's a baby, yeah? You have one who's a toddler. And you have one who's slightly older, say for about 10, 11 years old. Now, say for example, this older child who's about 10, 12 years old, he comes to you and he asks you, Daddy, can I have a PS5? Can I have an Xbox? You know, as a dad, as a mom, what are you going to do? I'm going to say, okay, son, we'll, we'll worry about it later. Or uh, not now, we'll get it later, inshallah. And he, he says, okay, dad, and he walks away. Okay. Then let's take the one who's in the middle. Say he's about six years old. You know, and let's say it's a daughter. And the daughter is slightly more clever, you know. They come, you know, they, they come to the dad because they know mom's going to say no. So they come to the dad and say, Dad, you want a massage? Um, can I get you anything, Daddy? And you're like, yeah. And you know that she's saying this because she wants something in return. But even then, you can say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Then you have the little kid, the little baby. Now he wants something, okay? And he asks you and you say no. What does he do? He starts crying. It's, no, I want this now. I want this. He starts crying and crying and crying. And what does the parent do? Eventually, the parents were, okay, here, khalas, here you go. Those two older ones, you can manage. But the little one, he persists so much and he cries and he cries and he begs that you just give it to him. 
That is how we ask Allah, my brothers and sisters. We beg and we beg, just like that little infant. We beg and we say, Ya Allah, give it to me. You can give it to me. I know you can. That is how you make dua. Just as an infant cries and cries until its mother gives it to it, just like that, that's how we ask Allah. And, you know, when we make dua, we don't just make dua for ourselves. We make dua for our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our spouses, our children, our relatives, friends, teachers, those who help us, you know, the Muslim ummah. Why? You know, this is the beauty. Look at the beauty of this that the Prophet ﷺ said that the dua that you make for a Muslim brother or sister in Islam, when he is not there, meaning that when you make a dua for someone else, when they are not there, that dua is accepted. And an angel is appointed to your side. And whenever he makes that dua, the angel says, Ameen, may you be blessed with the same. So say, for example, you have a best friend. And you're saying, Ya Allah, my best friend, give him good health. Give him good, uh, you know, give him good wealth. Give him good education. There's an angel next to you that says, Ameen, may you also be blessed with the same. Subhanallah. And this is a Sahih narration in Sahih Muslim. Look at the beauty of Islam that when you ask for others, that dua comes back to you as well. And which is why we should always ask for our ummah, for everyone that is close to us and everyone, you know, even non-Muslims, we ask for their guidance that Allah accept the people around me, my friends who are non-Muslims, the friends who I, don't, who I work with, Ya Allah, uh, guide them to Islam You know, oh, guide them uh, to Hidayah And my brothers and sisters That when we look at the world You know, we look around us And we see the different countries And the troubles, you know, that they're going through And Alhamdulillah, we as Muslims Living in Western countries We're so blessed that we don't have The problems that, you know So many of our brothers and sisters go through But, you know, sometimes we feel helpless You know, we look at, we look at the We look at the TVs And we see that, you know there's children in Syria, there's children in Palestine, there's people in Gaza, there's people in Somalia, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and they're going through so much hardship. And we think, oh, I want to do something. I want to, I really want to do something, but I can't. What can I do? Then remember, you always have dua. And that is one of the best things that you can do for them, that you raise your hands up to Allah, the weapon that Allah has equipped you with. And you say, Ya Allah, help my brothers in Palestine, help my brothers in Syria, help my brothers in Iraq and in all the Muslim countries in the world. And this is something very, very important. And you know that just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in, in the year, you have 12 months and he's made Ramadan the blessed month where, you know, everything's slightly uh, magnitude, you get more reward like that. There are specific times and situations when dua is accepted a lot quicker or more than other times. So as for situations, when you dua is, is accepted, a person who has been wronged or oppressed, which is why in Islam we should never wrong or oppress anyone because their duas are readily accepted. A person who finds themselves in se severe difficulty, their dua is readily accepted. The traveling person, which is why when any of your friends or you yourself are traveling, make constant dua because the dua of a traveler is readily accepted. Someone who is fasting, subhanAllah, in this month of Ramadan, when you're fasting, make constant dua. The one who's reciting Quran or who has just recited Quran. Someone who's performing Hajj. And as I mentioned, the someone who, when you make dua for someone in your absence and uh, a just ruler. You know, these categories of people, their du'as are accepted. Now, just like that, there are times when Allah readily accepts du'a. And what is that time? The last third of the night. So, you know, if you take from Isha to Fajr, the time in between, the last third of that time, du'a is readily accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven and says, is there anyone that wants forgiveness that I may forgive him? That is there anyone that wants anything that I may give it to him? So 
always try to get this practice, especially in in Ramadan. Wake up half an hour, one hour before Fajr and make dua because your dua at this time, the dua of tahajjud, the dua at night, by Allah, it is one of the most powerful times to make dua. And every Muslim who makes dua during this time, you will find your life will change completely. You know, between the adhan, adhan and the iqama. You know, when they give the adhan and there's a short period of time between adhan and iqama, that time, make dua. During salah, in sujood. In sujood is when you are the closest to your Rabb. The closest to Allah is when you're in sujood. Make dua to him. And remember, in, if you're praying sunnah or nawafil, you can make dua in sujood, out loud, in your own language. If Arabic is not your first language. If you know Arabic, then uh, scholars say that you should make it in Arabic. But if you don't know Arabic, if you don't understand Arabic, you can make dua in your own language, in English. You can be in sujood and you can say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, give me this. But remember, this is for the sunnah and nawafil. Do not do it in the five farad prayers. So in the five farad, don't do it. But in sunnah, in nawafil, in sujood, make as much dua as you can. Spend time in sujood. And when you come up from sujood, you will feel it when you make dua. Um, the next is when you finish your salah, when you finish all your azkar, there's another time when your dua is uh, accepted. And then uh, an hour on a Friday. And this is very important to understand that, you know, on Friday, there is a period on the 12 hours of a Friday where, where if you ask Allah anything, Allah will give it to you. And this is, we should make a habit that every Friday, we should try to make plenty of dua. And then uh, during the month of Ramadan and during Laylatul Qadr, my brothers were about four or five days away from the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So remember, be prepared, make a list of duas, you know, split your duas down, you know, have a list for your akhirah, have a list for your hereafter, have a list for your uh, duas for your family, for your uh, dunya. So you cover everything. And my brothers, my sisters, please do not underestimate the power of dua. Because dua can change a person's life overnight. But just remember the most important rules of dua. That if you want to see the power of dua, if you want to see the power of dua, you need to be sincere. You need to feel the dua that you're making rather than just repeating it again and again and again without feeling anything. You know, each time you make dua, Always think to yourself, now I am going to have a conversation with my Rabb, the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of the universe. I am going to speak to him. So go with that intention, with that mindset, and you will find that, you know, your du'as are a lot more powerful. And be regular in du'a. When you make one du'a and you don't have it accepted, don't give up. Because any time a, a believer makes du'a, three things happen. Any time you make du'a, Three, one of three things happen. Either Allah will accept your dua straight away and you will get it. Allah will delay that dua until he knows that he will give it to you at a time when he knows it's better for you. Or number three, that your dua will not be accepted in this world, but it will be a means of reward. You will find the reward in the hereafter. And when you make dua and you're constantly making dua and it's not accepted, Another benefit is that Allah protects you from calamities by means of that dua. So remember, it's a win-win-win situation. Your dua is always accepted. And as Muslims, subhanAllah, this is such a blessed thing that whenever you call out to Allah, Allah always responds. And when you get into the habit of dua, when you get into the habit of constantly asking Allah, speaking Allah, speaking to Allah, you will find that your du'as become more and more powerful. You will find that your du'as are more and more readily accepted. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to make us people who always turn to Allah in every single situation, in times of ease and in times of difficulty. You know, for things that are small and things that are big. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people who whenever we ask, Allah accepts. 
and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the ability to make the most heartfelt du'as. And every time we make du'a, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that du'a come from, from the depths of our, of our heart. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.